All right, uh, let's get started. Just a quick reminder of the main idea we're going to use here. It's called the zero product property. Okay, and it says this. If you multiply two things together, so imagine that happened. You multiply two things together, and the answer you know is zero. You don't know what either of these are, but you do know the answer is zero. Um, try to imagine any other possibility than one of these being zero, right? Uh, either it's zero times b, meaning a is zero, or it's a times zero, meaning b is zero. There's no other way to get zero. There's no way that a is one and b is three. That's going to be three. There's no way that a is seven and b is six. That's not going to be zero. That's going to be 42. There's no way to get zero by multiplication than to use a zero as one of the, this is a keyword, factors. Okay. Factors, factors, factors. Really key word. A factor is just a thing you multiply by another thing, okay, which is another factor, uh, to get something else. Okay, so A and B are factors because uh, they're being multiplied together. Y plus 7 and Y plus 2 are factors because they're being multiplied together. Okay, so let's get started on this homework. Um, just a reminder, a disclaimer here. These, uh, if you look at the homework problems, these look similar but a little bit different. So these numbers are different. I don't want to just do your homework for you, but I'll do one that's really close so that you can follow along. But I also uh, really encourage you to get to the point where you do not have to look at an example. Uh, if you need to practice more than what the homework is, do that. Give yourself some challenges. Uh, grab some more homework problems. Uh, get to the point where you can go from beginning to end without any help at all, okay? Um, and you'll be in good shape. All right, so now we're going to use the product, the zero product property to solve this equation. Um, and this is definitely different, a different idea than, uh, than what we normally do. Um, we would normally just try to get y by itself, right? But uh, it's not so easy in this case. So what we have here is a, a quadratic that's already been factored. We've pra been practicing factoring, and this has already been factored. And we're going to use this property to solve this equation. And how we're going to do that is to say, well, this is like A and this is like B. They're being multiplied together, just like A and B are being multiplied together, and they equal zero. Okay? So either this is zero, just like it was here, like basically we were saying A is zero here, or sorry, A is zero here, that's what we were saying there, or B is zero here. Right? So in this case, either A, that's A, is zero, or b is 0. And then we just solve these like normal. Now we just get y by itself. We subtract 7 on both sides. y is negative 7. y is negative 2. Let's see if that's correct. Well, if I put a negative 7 in for both of these y's, right, y has to be the same. I'll put a negative 7 in here. Negative 7. Well, negative 7 plus 7 is 0. Negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. 0 times negative 5 is 0, so it works out. If we put a negative 2 in there, we'll get a 0 times, uh, well, this will be 5. It'll be 0 times 5, and we'll get 0. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see some, like, we'll actually do the factoring in um, a few problems from now. Uh, let's do this one. All right, this is like A, and this is like B. We're multiplying them together, and we get 0. So one of these factors has to be 0. Either this one. This whole thing, this parentheses, a factor, is zero. Either that whole thing comes out to be zero, or this other one does. It has to be one of those two. If this, if one of these things isn't true, there's no way that they multiply to make zero. If this one's one and this one's two, that you're not going to multiply them together to get zero. All right, here we add two thirds on both sides, and g is two thirds. Here we subtract 17 from both sides and get g is negative 17. Okay. Um, we could test it out. We plug two thirds in here. Two thirds minus two thirds times two thirds plus seventeen. That's zero. And I don't care to find a uh, common denominator and add these together because this is zero. And no matter what this turns out to be, well, I'll get zero. Doesn't matter. It equals zero for sure. All right. Now this is like A and this is like B. One of these has to be zero, so either this is zero or this is zero. So 
So we add 27 to both sides. 3n equals 27. n equals 9 if we divide by 3 on both sides. 2n equals negative 18 if we subtract 18 on both sides. And n equals negative 9 if we divide by 2. Okay, So either 9 or negative 9 will work. Um, we take this guy and plug it in there. Let's see what happens. 3 times negative 9 minus 27 times 2 times negative 9 plus 18. This one is negative 27 minus 27. That's, that's not 0. But this is negative 18 plus 18. So now we have negative 54 times 0, 0. And that's what it's supposed to equal. It's supposed to equal 0. So we solved it. And if we do 9, if you put a positive 9 here, you'll get 0 here, and then you get 0. All right, this one, uh, we're supposed to factor out the greatest possible monomial. OK, so let's uh, talk about this. Hey, we got monomials. Monomials. Uh, I'm spelling that wrong. No, I am not. Monomials, we got binomials. We got trinomials. And beyond that, we pretty much have polynomials. Monomials, one by two, try three poly many. OK, so what is there one of, or two of, or three of, or many of? Nomials. There's one, two, three, four, whatever, many nomials, meaning I like to read it uh, terms. OK, so the nomials part. Terms. Okay, there's two terms here, so this is a binomial, but from this we're going to factor out a monomial, like a factor that this and this have in common. Um, so I'll say that monomial is three. Okay, so what we've really done here is we have undistributed the three, which is the same thing as to say factor out. So we undistribute or factor out. And this is the preferred term. This is the one that you'll hear if you walk into a, a college classroom and ask uh, the professor what has just been done. Uh, they'll probably say they factored out a 3, right? Um, OK, so let's, let's look at the next one. Again, we're, we're factoring a monom monomial meaning uh, oh, a single term, rather than factoring a quadratic where you get two parentheses with two binomials. Okay. What is the largest thing that we can factor out of both of these? Well, 5 and 6 don't have any factors in common. But there's some s factors, right? There is a, some number of s's we could factor out. But if we distributed them back in here, we would get this. Well, let's try s. OK, so that means that I have to, this would be an s to the fourth. When I multiply this s times s to the fourth, I'll get s to the fifth. And the 6s, right? s times s is s squared. But couldn't I also take out another s, right. another s, leaving no s's here, an s to the third here, and I factor out an s squared. s squared times s to the third is s to the fifth. s squared times 6 is 6s six squared. Okay, So we could factor out numbers like 3 or uh, these variable factors like s squared. Right. So let's try the next one. Um, let's see, let's check the numbers and the variables, see if there's anything in common. Let's see, 14 and 7. Well, they have 7 in common. Right? That leaves a 2 and well, a negative 1. What about the m's? Let's see if we can factor out an m and uh, 2 m's and 3 m's. Like we can factor out m to the third. That would mean that if we just the m to the third to another m to the third, we get m to the sixth. <coughs> and we add those exponents. And the, it's like all of the m to the thirds are gone here. So if we just leave this a negative 1, 7m to the third times a negative 1 is negative 7m to the third. Try to find the biggest thing that you can, um, that you would be able to distribute into here and come up with the original. Let's see about this one. Um, in this case, the variables seem a little bit more obvious. How about an x to the fifth, right? I could distribute that to an x to the fourth and get x to the ninth. And uh, like a 1 here, um, a negative there, um, negative something. 
All right, what about a number? Can we factor a number out from both of these? Uh, I could factor out, since they both have the same denominator, I could think like, what if I multiply 4 by a third? I distribute a third into the 4. You get 4 thirds. And then it turns out if I just distribute a third to the negative 1, I get 1 third. So negative 1 third x to the fifth times negative 1 is negative 1 third x to the fifth. 1 third times 4 is 4 thirds. x to the fifth times x to the fourth is x to the ninth. Okay, now we're supposed to solve this. Uh, you know, we put our monomial factoring skills together with our solving skills, or solving equation skills uh, using the zero product property. Okay, so first we factor it. Factor out the biggest monomial possible. That looks to just be a single factor of b. All right, and I can double check this. b times b is b squared. b times 2 is 2b. Now we use the zero product property. Uh, and this is going to be confusing because I'm using it for b. But this is like a and b from the first slide, where a times b equals zero. This b is not the same as this b. That's a green b. That's a purple b, or pink. I don't know what your assessment of that color is. <coughs> so one of these things that we're multiplying, either b or this parentheses, b plus 2, has to be equal to zero. Right, in this case, b is 0. It's solved. b is by itself. Here we subtract 2 on both sides. b is negative 2. Those are our solutions. If I put b in 0 in for b, 0 times 0 plus 2, that's 0 times 2. We get 0. Put in a negative 2. This one is 0. We're multiplying it by negative 2. We still get 0. All right. Factor again. Factor out a monomial, right? This is some simple factoring. In 9.5, we'll do some more in-depth factoring. But here we just factor out a monomial. Let's see what we can factor out. Um, 15 and 20, uh, looks like a 5 in common there. Personally, when this first term is negative, I like to factor out a negative, undistribute a negative number, so that inside the parentheses, I'll have a positive number. This is just my preference. Um, what else can we factor out? We can factor out a y, so a negative 5y. Okay, so what would this have to be? So when I distribute this, I get this. So this had to be a 3y, right? Let's double check that. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. y times y is y squared. All right, what would this have to be? So I get a negative 20y. Well, that would have to be a positive 4. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. And the y times, you know, 1 is y. So negative 20y. All right, again, so two things, negative 5y. And the second thing is 3y plus 4 are being multiplied together and they equal 0. So one of them, either 5y, negative 5y, equals 0, or 3y plus 4 equals 0. Uh, here we'll divide both sides by negative 5. We'll still get y is 0. Here we'll subtract 4 on both sides, divide by 3 on both sides, negative 4 thirds. Right. Either one of these. If we plug either one of these, let's take the negative 4 thirds. That's kind of cool. So negative 5 times negative 4 thirds times, um, yeah, 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 3 times negative 4 thirds plus 4. Let's see what happens. 5 times negative, so that's got 20 over 3 times, okay, 3 times negative 4, the 3's cancel. You get negative 4 plus 4. That's 0 times 20 thirds, and that's 0, just like we should get. All right, this one is a little bit tricky. The key, the key, key, key thing here is to use the zero product property. Zero, okay? That means that one of the sides of this equation needs to be zero. We need to get it to look like this. Something times something equals zero. Not something times something equals five, or something times something equals 20, or something times something equals 13s. There's no one product property or 13s product property. The zero product property requires that one of the sides of the equation be zero, okay? Which means, how are we gonna get one of these sides to be zero? It's, it's a simple thing to do. If we subtract 13s from both sides, these are not like terms, so we're just going to have 3s squared minus 13s equals, on this side, 0. 
Now it looks just like the problem before that we just did. Right? Factor out the largest common factor, 3 and 13, no common factors. Okay, so the only thing we factor out is s. s times 3s, right? 3s times 3s is 3s squared, minus 13. So s times negative 13 is 13s equals 0. So now either s is 0 or 3s minus 13 is 0. And then we'll solve it. This is kind of like a 5. This is an s. 3s. So we'll add 13 on both sides. 3s equals 13. We'll divide by 3 on both sides. Right. We could test it out. We could put 13 over 3 right here and right here. Try it out. Figure out this turns to 0. And 0 times 13 thirds is 0. All right, nine point five. Now um, we just kind of continue on from this, from just the problem before this. Only the factoring is a little more challenging. It's like the factoring that we had on the quiz. Okay, so we're going to factor this quadratic, and then set each factor equal to zero. Um, and it will, when, once we factor it, it will look more like this problem, where it was already factored. We set each factor equal to zero, and solve you know, for the variable, okay? So, right here. So first we factor this, just like we factored on the quiz, All right? So you got two parentheses here, and I got n times n is n squared. n times n is n squared. So now I need uh, two numbers that multiply to make a positive eight, okay? So that's either gonna be negative and negative, or positive and positive. Um, these two numbers are also going to add to 6, so they're going to be positive and positive. What two numbers multiply to 8 and add to 6? 4 and 2. Just a reminder here, don't think of it as a shortcut and that you have, you're completely clueless, you know, what's going on here, really. If you're just saying, oh, I'm, all I'm going to do is find two numbers that multiply to 8 and add to 6, and you don't know why they're supposed to do that, you should really not stay in that place. Okay, so let me just remind you why that needs to happen why we're looking for those two numbers. This is an n. Okay, we're going to distribute everything, right? We're going to distribute the n. All right, so we're going to get n squared minus 2a. Or, sorry, plus 2a. Then we're going to get 4 times n and 4 times 2. So we're going to get 4n plus 8, right? The 4 times 2 gives us the 8. That's why these two numbers need to multiply to 8. And the 2n plus 4n gives us 6n. That's why they need to add to 6. Okay, just a reminder friendly reminder. All right, so now these two factors that multiply together to be zero, when two things multiply together, even if you don't know what they were, you do know that one of them has to be zero if you multiply them together and get zero. So either n plus four is equal to zero when all is said and done, or n plus two is equal to zero, which means that n would have to be negative four for that to happen, and n would have to be negative two over here for that to happen. So whether we plug negative four in here for both of these n's, or if we plug in negative two in here, We'll get a zero here when we plug in negative four, zero times uh, negative two. And if we put a negative two in here, we'll get zero times two, and we'll still get zero. Okay. Next one. Okay, this is very similar, but it's also similar to, um, I believe, no, not that one, not that one, maybe this one, this one. Remember, one side was not zero yet, so we needed to get one of the sides to be zero. Very important. Zero product property. Well, the same story. No, come on. We need one of these sides to be zero, so very simply we subtract 18 on both sides. It doesn't combine with either of these. It's not like terms with either of these things. So we just get t squared minus 7t minus 18 equals zero. Okay. So we factor this quadratic. Got a t times a t is going to be t squared. Um, so what multiplies the negative 18? It's going to multiply to negative, so it's going to be positive and negative. And then adds to negative 7. 6 and 3, no, 9 and 2. Negative 9 and 2. Let's test it. Make sure to always test it, whether mentally or actually by writing it down. We got t squared. Minus 9t plus 2t. Minus 18, just careful with all those negatives. Minus 7t, minus 18, we got it, check. Okay, so we're good to go. Now, this times this is zero, so either this 
is zero, or this is zero. Either this parentheses is zero, or this parentheses is zero. This factor is zero, or this factor is zero. That means that t is negative two. That would make this zero, and zero times anything is zero. Add nine to both sides, t is nine. That would make this zero. Zero times anything is zero. So we found the two solutions, two different solutions. All right, this one. Um, Last one, maybe the most challenging, all right? Um, let's start with the fact that one of the sides needs to be equal to zero, okay? So we subtract 32 on both sides. We got s times s plus four minus 32 equals zero. Notice it's, it's uh, not s times s minus uh, 28, right? Because we can't subtract 32 from this four inside the parentheses. We would have to multiply, right? PEMDAS multiply before we subtract. Okay, so don't subtract it from the 4. It's just out here. Okay, so can we say like uh, s equals 0 or s plus 4 equals 0 or negative 32 equals 0? No, that's, that's not going to work because it's the 0 product. That's the other key thing, product. Okay, that means multiply together. Negative 32 is not being multiplied by anything. It's not being multiplied by this stuff. Okay, this 0 right now does not look it's not the result of something times something else. Right, something times something else minus 32. Well, this would just have to be 32, and there's an infinite number of ways to get 32. Okay? All that might have sounded confusing. Here's the, the, the end conclusion. We can't do that. What we need is a product. How are we going to get that? Well, we're going to have to multiply this out. S squared plus 4S. Okay? Then we have this minus 32. Now we have a quadratic that we can now factor and then set each factor equal to zero. All right. So each factor, what's that going to be? We got an s and an s, clearly. Uh, something that multiplies a negative 32 and adds to 4. Well, let's see, 8 and what? 8 and 4, that sounds right. So plus 8 minus 4, let's check it out. s plus 8 times s minus 4, s squared minus 4s plus 8s, minus 32, so s squared plus 4s, minus 32. So either s plus 8, that factor is equal to 0, or s minus 4, that factor is equal to 0, and 4. So s is negative 8, that would cause this to be 0, or s is 4, that would cause this to be 0, so there we go. Um, that's it, that's the last one. Um, let me know if there's anything else I can help you with. Uh, thanks for watching.